Not every TV show gets it right the first time. When you consider all the elements that make up a classic series, it's only natural that even the most iconic shows took a long time to hit their stride. Sure, there's been a few that were able to grab the viewer by the scruff of the neck from the off, however, looking back at some of the all-time TV greats, you can see that many had been airing for years before reaching their peak. With this in mind, I'm Jules WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 episodes that turned good TV shows into classics. Number 10. Curb Your Enthusiasm, The Doll The first of two Larry David creations on this list, Curb Your Enthusiasm is considered one of the greatest sitcoms ever. By me, by your mum, by that guy Steve. Inevitably, Curb was always going to spend its formative years in the shadow of Seinfeld, and while the first season had its moments, the humour was slow burning and perhaps too focused on the Larry-Cheryl relationship. In the middle of the second season, though, came The Doll, which confirmed that the show had developed its own comic identity. No one is safe from Larry's meddling, least of all the little girl whose favourite doll gets a haircut courtesy of our well-intended protagonist. It's a stock formula of Larry getting into a situation and then him doing the best to get out of it, but it's done so well that the doll stands as an example of how to do this formula perfectly. Number 9. Star Trek The Next Generation Best of Both Worlds Parts 1 and 2 Okay, yeah, I know, technically these are two episodes, but the Best of Both Worlds arc is perhaps the most important in Star Trek history. The two-parter saw the return of the Borg, who captured Picard and assimilate him as their spokesperson. The ending of part one is simply unforgettable TV. Riker acting as captain and faced with the transformed Picard threatening his crew gives Worf the order. In an era where series regulars rarely got killed off and Star Trek rarely tampered with the status quo, this was shocking stuff. Prior to this episode, the show had mostly stuck to the tried and tested Monster of the Week format, but this arc had repercussions that were felt later in the series. And it proved that the next generation was prepared to take risks to tell its story. Number 8. Breaking Bad – Phoenix Breaking Bad's second season truly came to a head in its 12th episode, which ends up with Walter walking into Jesse's house only to find him and Jane passed out from heroin abuse. While trying to wake Jesse, he inadvertently knocks into Jane, causing her to vomit and choke on it. At first, our anti-hero tries to help, only to stop and contemplate that actually Jane's removal would be best for business. He leaves her to die, and as the tears leave his eyes, so do the last remnants of morality. Phoenix may not have had the bombast of what would come later, but it was an episode that boldly marked a character transformation in Walt. The shifting dynamic between him and Jesse, and indeed the direction Breaking Bad would go. The quirky crime drama that had opened with a middle-aged man scampering around the desert in his pants was on its way to becoming one of the 21st century's most important cultural achievements. Number 7. Father Ted – Hell the first series of Father Ted provided plenty of laughs, but it was the opening episode of Series 2, Hell, that truly etched the show's name in the pantheon of British sitcom greats. The premise is pretty simple as well. Fathers Ted, Dougal and Jack go on their annual holiday to a caravan park, which features such attractions as St Kevin's Stump and The Magic Road. Hilarity ensues as the priests have a run-in with a romancing couple, raw sewage and the madcap Father Noel Furlong. If you've never had the pleasure of watching Father Ted before, I would implore you to start with my final destination in life, hell. Number 6. The Shield – Dominoes Falling Gritty cop drama The Shield regularly pops up in various greatest shows of all time lists, and with episodes like Dominoes Falling, it's easy to see why. The second season had been an eventful one for the crew, centering on Vic and his group coming across the Armenian Mafia's massive money laundering operation. Dirty cops have to pay their bills too, so the boys devise a plan to rob the cash. Dominoes Falling sees their daring scheme rattle towards its climax. In classic Shield fashion, the robbery doesn't go quite smoothly, and the suspense is ramped up to almost unbearable terrible levels as mobsters get spooked, bodies pile up and things look pretty bleak for the strike team. In the end though, the heist pays off and the episode's final shot of the men gazing at the obscene amount of money that's now in their possession sticks long in the memory. Number 5. The Office – The Dundies the first season of the US office is rather rough around the edges and felt so copy-paste in others that it put a lot of people off. However, when the show was good, it was really good, and it began with the Dundies. The premise is simple. Michael Scott is eagerly preparing for the titular awards ceremony. As always, Michael's intentions are good, however, the night only serves to show the Dunder Mifflin boss as his worst. Desperate to please as the night wears on, Michael's MST shtick turns from hilarious to tragic as we see just how deluded the man is. What the Dundies does so brilliantly is that it establishes the inter-office culture that would become the foundation of the show's humour from 
from that moment on. And in retrospect, the quick kiss that Pam gives Jim was a key moment in the will-they-won't-they they arc that ran through the show's early seasons. With this episode, The Office emerged from the shadow of its original and blossomed into a superb sitcom in its own right. Number 4. Fringe – Peter Upon its premiere, Fringe received a lukewarm reception, but halfway through the second season came an episode that was able to turn even the show's staunchest critics into diehard fans. The Peter of the episode's title is the son of fan favorite character Walter Bishop. Walter's boy is actually from a parallel universe, and through a flashback to 1985, he explains to series protagonist Olivia Dunham how this situation came to be. It's an intriguing concept, but the concept alone doesn't make great television. Fortunately, Peter is masterful storytelling giving the series an emotional core that it had been missing before. The use of parallel universes mixed in with 1980s nostalgia makes for great entertainment, but ultimately, this is just a beautiful story about a father's love for his son. Number 3. Seinfeld – The Bubble Boy the Bubble Boy doesn't show up until season 4, so does that mean that I'm writing off the first three seasons? Well, no, but this is just where things got really good. What Seinfeld did best was create small, inciting incidents and build them to inspired levels of insanity, with each character's individual storylines beautifully and hilariously tying together. In The Bubble Boy, George and his girlfriend Susan plan a romantic trip to her family's lakeside cabin. It quickly becomes the trip from hell, though, as George gets into a legendary altercation with The Bubble Boy over a game of Trivial Pursuit. Jerry loses a fan after he and Elaine argue with a waitress, and Kramer manages to burn down the family cabin with a misplaced cigar. It's 20 odd minutes of madcap brilliance, the kind that no other sitcom before or since has really gotten close to. Number 2. Star Trek Deep Space Nine – The Way of the Warrior Yes, I know it's another Star Trek entry, so assimilate me, but the season 4 premiere of this show was f***ing outstanding. Tensions are high in The Way of the Warrior, when Deep Space Nine is visited by a Klingon fleet on shore leave. They soon start trouble on the station, which leads to an annoyed Captain Sisko calling in Next Generation favorite Worf for assistance. It soon surfaces that the Klingons have plans to invade Cardassia, a war that could have galaxy-wide ramifications. Deep Space Nine is praised for exploring multifaceted themes that other Star Trek series rarely touched on. In The Way of the Warrior, the focus is on the themes of suspicion and paranoia between civilizations, something that still continues to resonate in our current political climate. In short, it's pretty nice. And number one, The Simpsons. Two cars in every garage and three eyes on every fish. It's almost universally agreed on that the golden age of The Simpsons spans from season 3 to season 8, but that seems to unfairly miss out on the greats that are scattered within the show's second season, including this stone cold gem. Rather than centering on the show's then breakout star Bart, or indeed any of the other Simpson brood, Two Cars focuses on the secondary character Mr. Burns and his run for political office. For a program only in its 17th episode, it's pretty safe to say that this was a ballsy move, but it pays off big time. While the episode is as laugh out loud funny as you would expect from classic Simpsons, it also acts as a sharp satire of the most absurd aspects of American politics, in particular, the media frenzy that drives it. Two Cars also points to how the show transformed. What had been a mildly subversive but cozy family sitcom had broadened its scope to lampooning the world around them. It's ambitious, intelligent, and nothing like what it is today. I hope that Fox lets it die soon. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below, and if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though, but it might be.